Yeah, our throttle has curves. Uh. <laughs> My name is Stuart Baker. I'm a lifelong model railroader and uh, I'm an electrical engineer professionally. Uh, and for pretty much my whole career and my lifetime while railroading, I've been finding ways to uh, combine those two things. Mm -hmm. Hey, my name is Balaj Rats. Uh, I had model railroads when I was a kid, and then there was a long chaos, and then about 10 years ago, I got back into the hobby. And ever since then, I've been trying to build uh, model railroads with uh, somewhat intelligent control systems. My name is uh, John Social Aloha. I've um became interested in it. Well, I, I was not in the project originally. I was uh, creating my own throttle. And it was inspired when I first used an um, engine driver on a Android. And I didn't like having to unlock it. I didn't ha like having to look at the screen. I really wanted something that was uh, physical, that I could feel and uh, run the trains without having to look at it. So I started working on my own throttle, which was pretty tiny at the time. Uh, I've always been very interested in DCC. And I think the DCC has been a really big asset for our hobby in terms of standardizing on uh, what happens on the track level and, and getting a really wide variety of products from a number of manufacturers. And uh, that standard now is, is pretty mature, um, not to mean that it doesn't have legs for the future, but uh, I really feel as though uh, there's now room to maybe take the next step in the hobby technologically, and that's where the idea of LCC comes in. Uh, it's a way to extend additional standards to additional aspects of model railroad control and the hope is that we would get the same benefits in those areas that we have over the years with DCC. Yeah, I think we have a very complimentary team and you know it wasn't by design, I think it was mostly by accident. Um, I've been very heavily focused as the hardware lead uh, in terms of developing some of the prototype circuit boards that go into the product. Obviously, uh, every step of the way, we're closely involved with TCS and doing the reviews and providing feedback. Uh, I'm a software engineer by trade, so my main focus in the entire project is to take the software stack that we had uh, written with Stuart for, as an, as an LCC reference implementation and make it work for the use cases of uh, TCS in this particular case. I had a command station on my own layout that I built myself. Um, it blew up every couple of months. So I was very <laughs> happy to, to have sort of like professional quality hardware be available for, for this effort. Uh, and uh, I've been porting uh, most of the code that I had written for my own command station so that it can run in the commercial hardware that uh, the TCS is producing. On this project, the first thing that I took on um, when I joined the group was uh, redesigning the case. So uh, one of my hobbies is uh, making injection molds. So I like designing things for injection molding. So I designed the case. I also had the passion to create a mini version of the throttle. And so I designed that and convinced these guys to do it as well. And then the final thing that I, I mainly, I guess, the lead on is the uh, integration with JMRI, LNWI, et cetera. Um, it's pretty much the same thing that you would get from Engine Driver or the Wide Throttle app, except that you have physical buttons, physical knob, and you can run it one-handed without looking at it. So basically our hardware is a standard uh, Wi-Fi connecting device, and you can connect it to your Wi-Fi network, let it be your home network with GMRI on it, or let it be the custom network that devices like the NWI is advertising. And then you can drive locomotives over your uh, layout the same way as you would do with a smartphone app. I think the, the, the real reason to put LCC into the command station is that it's, it's our bridge to the future. So if you think about the, the past 20 or 30 years of DCC, we have had a lot of innovation and other manufacturers have developed their own layout control buses and layout networks. Uh, but up until this point, there really is nothing that's universal and standard between um, lots of different other many, lots of different manufacturers all having equal access to the to what's required to develop for that standard, uh, as well as uh, 
a lot of the existing protocols and standards were actually really developed maybe 20 or even 30 years ago. And they are in a lot of ways uh, going, being pushed beyond their initial uh, realization of scale when they were developed. And so uh, I think it is time to take a second look at, at how a network would be developed and how it would scale to the size of installations and the complexity of, of animation installations that we're seeing in some of the bigger layouts today. And that's where LCC comes in. The other thing is, you know, from a, a user's perspective, you know, they're all, people are always talking about, I'm going to be locked into a system if I buy this system. And that's not true with using LCC. So uh, the whole idea of LCC is you can buy a throttle from someone else or a command station from someone else when there is another option, and you can mix and match them. Uh, it's just like DCC. You, know, you can buy different components from different companies. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, our throttle has curves. Uh, <laughs> and you, one of the things that, uh, that when we were talking through with some of the mechanical design, and this was even before John was on board, but John really took it to the next level, and that is that uh, we wanted to fit really nicely in the hand. So if you think about the way that, that your hand wants to go around an object, your hand wants to go around an object that's a, a cylinder. That's the most comfortable thing in your hand. So if you were to pick up our throttle and look at the profile of it, either the, either the large one or the smaller one, uh, they both have basically a half round shape to really feel good in the hand. So we have a, a large uh, backlit screen where we have the ability to show on one hand uh, all the configuration options and the settings are in, uh, in plain English text. So you don't have to browse through long manuals in order to figure out what to do. Uh, everything is a menu based system. So you don't have to understand what 75 buttons on the front of your throttle each individually are doing. It's not like an eye test to figure out uh, what, which button is, the, is doing what. I mean, it's somewhat of a subjective question, right? I mean, some people really do love the smartphone experience. And, you know, I'm not here to tell them that they're wrong because they're not wrong. But for me personally, um, I like the tactile feedback just because I don't have to uh, be looking down at a screen or trying to, to, to index my finger to the right place to push the right button. I am uh, regularly attending operating sessions and when you do operations on model railroads, the requirements on you both physically and mentally are very, very different than if you're just running a train around a Christmas tree. So you really need to be able to, to work the layout in a way that you have the handle, handle of the throttle, the paperwork and the uncoupling tool. You only have two hands. So you can't afford to use both hands and both your eyes on the, on the smartphone while uh, being able to, to manipulate the cars on the way out. So I think that one thing that we haven't really talked about is reliability. And there are a number of wireless systems in this small railroad space today. Uh, and, the, and for the time in which those systems were introduced and designed, they, they operate very well by the, those, those standards. Uh, here sitting in 2019, uh, it's, it's no longer considered viable to go off and do a, a, a homegrown wireless network or wireless system and expect to have the same level of quality or performance that you can get with an off-the-shelf protocol like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or something of that standardized nature. So. Another important property of Wi-Fi is that you can always go to, uh, to an electronics retailer and buy a signal extender. This means that, that you never have to worry about signal strength when you're using a Wi-Fi based system. Piggybacking off of universally, universal electrical standards uh, or IEEE standards that are in the marketplace allows us to focus on things that are enabling it's enabling me specific to our hobby and not focus on things that are just incidental to get there, like being able to have a reliable wireless connection between two points. That part, by using all these off-the-shelf technologies, is already handled for us, and it's already been done by people that are way smarter than us in a way that's, that's reliable. The most important component with, uh, with the, the universal throttle is that you have the ability to take your throttle and bring it to somebody else's layout. This is generally accomplished by standards. 
uh, and LCC would be one of the open standards uh, that can do that. Uh, today, uh, there is a roundabout solution to get to the same place where most people are running GMRI on their layouts and that allows visitors to bring their smartphones. Now, with the TCS throttles being able to act the same way as smartphones do, you have the ability to take your TCS throttle and bring it as a visitor to other people's layouts. And that allows you as, as a guest operator to be able to self, be self-sufficient on somebody else's layout. Uh, that means you can use the throttle that you are accustomed to. You know the ergonomics, your fingers always know where to point and what to click or what to roll, which is really helpful. And it's also helpful on the, on the layouts which are open for operations because they don't need to acquire dozens of throttles in order to accommodate visitors. Uh, so the financial load on the layout owners becomes significantly less in an open, accessible ecosystem. You know, another thing that we get though is, you know, we do allow some of the buttons uh, and the thumb wheels, the thumb switches to be customized to just the way you want. So if you can take your throttle with you to someone else's layout, it's going to be customized just the way you want. You don't have to customize someone else's throttle. Um, or, you know, the real issue is, I mean, that we haven't touched on, is you go to someone else's layout, you use NCE, they have Digitracks. You have no idea how to call up a locomotive, much less do anything else with it. Uh, so if you've got a throttle you're familiar with and you can bring it, you know how to use it.